Welcome to the Political Ferret Show. New content will be uploaded every Wednesday and Sunday. This video was financed by my Patreons. Thank you for making the change possible. Well, I got myself a 3D printer and for years now people tell me how 3D printing will kill companies like Games Workshop and I'm here today to say how 3D printing will actually save Games Workshop if they don't change what they do right now or if they just change a little bit. But before we have can start there, we have to point out some things. First, the 3D printed stuff does not look as good as the original stuff. There is pretty much no working around that. Even if you have a very expensive printer, it will not look as good. Point. There is no argument around that. Some people will say in the comment section, oh no, it's not right, you can't, it's not true. You can't reach the sophistication, the quality of these models that you can buy. Point. That's about it. The next thing we have to talk about is proxies. What you can't do is you can't print out your stuff and then sell them as Games Workshop stuff. Then you have problems. But if you use proxies made of whatever you want, you can play them. Games Workshop will not come to your seller and will not banish you from, from something when you play with proxies. Everybody plays with proxies. Oh, you don't have bikes? Well, take this cavalry play with that that's normal you often play with proxies especially in a home environment if you go to some championships it is a completely different story but in a strictly home environment you can play with proxies and the old rule books were full of proxies and a lot of character models not even had models for them so it is quite normal to play with proxies especially for people who are as cool as i am so the next question is, what do you pay for this? Well, for this wonderful model you pay around 35 euros and this is quite a lot for a chunk of plastic. So let's view what a 3D printed model will cost you and it is a little bit more complicated. Again, to point out, this does not look like this. Let's look at these points that are similar. You see that the one is printed and you see the others with smooth edges that they are not. So it is not the same product, but it is about 80% of the product. It is not the fine refined last 20%, but for 80% I would say it is the same product. So let's go into that. What does this thing cost? Well, first you have to think about what you need. You need the plastic, you need the raw material, you need the machine, you need the energy, you need the work time and you need the time and the space for the machine and for your stuff and for the plastic and so on. So the plastic is around at 20 euros for 1.7 kilograms and this figure has about 10 grams which makes 10 cents for this thing in plastic. The machine comes, let's go with a cheaper one at 500 euros. And here's the tricky part. How long does this machine work? Well, I would say it holds as long as you have put uh, replacement parts in it in the worst that you invested in the first place. So at the point I invested 500 euros into my 3D printer, it is pretty much gone. So this is about 10,000 hours. Perhaps it might be less, it might be more. There is a lot of discussion running around. I will not go into that, which means that if I print that for 10 hours, which is reasonable, so it comes down to about 11 cents that are pretty much the machining costs. With energy, such a machine takes about 100 watt, which is really, really not a lot. And for about 70 cents for a kilowatt hour, and 10 hours printing time you come again at around 70 cents. So here's now the tricky part, work time. If you calculate your own working time and you say you could go to your normal work and work some extra hours, you would make money. So you have to calculate this in. So if you say you earn 50 euros per hour and you take about 30 minutes of time, you have to invest into that to get it out, to slice it and download it and so on, you come to 25 euros Euros. And this is quite a lot. And then it's the thing with time and space. It depends on where you live and where you store your stuff. I mean, there is per definition a difference if you store it in the center of Tokyo or if you store it somewhere in, I don't know, Nebraska, because 
because you pay for the square meter a different amount of money. So, so this is very hard to calculate. So we come here to 25 euros, which is quite a lot. But if you take a close look, it's all work time. And if you say, I do not care about the work time, well, it is to an equal amount material, the machine and energy. So if you say, I do not care about my work time because 3D printing is also a nice hobby or it is part of the hobby, like it is spraying on this thing and painting this thing and so on. Well, then we are down at half a euro, which is not really a lot because this is about 1% of the costs of the original part for about 80% of the quality. So if you think about starting an army, you can invest either 1000 euros or 10 euros and two weeks of printing time, which is a difference, especially if you have a 3D printer around or you have friends who have a 3D printer. I mean, for most people, starting a game and investing 1000 euros, even before you really know if you like it or not, that is quite a hurdle. It makes way more sense to just print it out, especially if you're 14 and you can 3D print in your school or something like that. So you have now an army and the army is comprised completely out of 3D printed stuff and you play with that. You can go, don't go to a tournament or something like that, but you can play with that with your friends. But then there comes this time when you think, oh, I want to have my hero in a real good looking fashion so i buy one from games workshop and i paint him and so on and so on and then i say okay i want now these guys and these guys and these guys also so you replace slowly your 3d printed stuff with the original parts and this is affordable because still such a figure for 30 40 70 bucks is quite a lot but you can slowly replace your 3d printed parts that have essentially not a lot of value with the really cool ones. And this is viable absolutely for the younger people, for the 15 year old boys who want to play this game to get into the game, they can start with a 3D printed army. The interesting question now is of course what Games Workshop will do in such a thing. You see, normally Games Workshop gave us their miniatures and we played the game. So the 3D models come from other players. They can't, do not come from Games Workshop because they have not really an interest in providing that. And the thing is, these models become better and better and better with every day. So what Games Workshop could do, perhaps if they have a long-term strategy and the idea of what 3D printing can do, will do and how it will evolve, would be to say, okay, we provide middle quality miniatures because then people will not make any more. Then they have the monopole on producing miniatures in both ways, on the 3D printed market and on the real market. If they don't do that, and I would argue that they will not do that, the following thing will happen. You have the model and you can have them for 1% of the costs at 80% of quality. At some point the quality will increase, but the costs will not. So you have then a 59% quality thing for about one buck. And then it will go above that and people will innovate and you will have models that look even cooler than the Games Workshop things still for 1% of the cost, but with a better quality. And this is a tricky thing, and this is a very dangerous situation indeed. This is what people say. They will say, look up to the models that are right now around, they look pretty decent, they, they look pretty cool, and <laughs> a lot of them look even cooler than the Games Workshop things because they're stuck in a design hole for some reasons. And at some point, 3D printing will not increase cost, but the quality will increase, and then Games Workshop will have a lot of problems. The only way to keep the quality of at around 80% is give the models pretty much freely, but with a lower quality, with a lower polygon count or something like that, for the people that they can print it out and you hold the monopoly on miniatures. But again, this is what Games Workshop could do. I guess they will not do that. But this is something that would change the game. Games Workshop then could stay with his high price model, but give the young players a possibility to get into the hobby in the first place. If they stick with, oh no, we give you very, very expensive models and we fight the 3D uh, printing community, 
it will not work out very well because the 3D printing community will fight back and will find ways to distribute their own models and their models will increase in quality. If on the other hand, as I said, Games Workshop takes this over and say here you have the models, there is no incentive for people to improve on that in the very end. So if a company like Games Workshop looks into the future and sees things like 3D printing not only as a competition that it is it clearly is but also as an opportunity it could absolutely save the company if they make sane decisions the question is will they do that or will they do something that would have been a good idea 40 years ago well knowing games workshop i would go with the latter but in the end still even if they fight the 3d printing community I think it will open up the gate for some younger players who start with completely proxy armors, completely uh, 3D printed to the hobby and this could then save Games Workshop even though they do not deserve it. Thanks for watching, like, share and subscribe and have a wonderful day.